Hi, my name is Seth Ladd and welcome to this episode of Dart Tips. This is part one in a series about functions, the stalwart and trusty building blocks of any app. Dart supports top-level functions, optional parameters, nested functions, passing functions as arguments to other functions, and more. It's not uncommon to build an entire app using only functions. If you think Dart is only classes and libraries, you're in for a treat. This episode will focus on defining and calling functions. Let's get started. Functions are reusable bundles of logic. They can take zero or more arguments, perform some work, and optionally return a value. Here's a very simple function named meaning of life. The empty parentheses means this function does not take any parameters. Use the return statement to return a value, in this case 42. If no return statement is specified, the function returns null. Here's how you call this function. So far so good, but Dart likes to be a terse language, so we can simplify the definition of this function into a single line. This fat arrow syntax is syntactic sugar for a more terse way to return the resulting value of the expression on the right hand side of the fat arrow. Functions can of course accept parameters. Here's an example. This code works just fine, but this is Dart. We have optional type annotations, so we can annotate this method's parameters and return type. We strongly recommend using type annotations on the surface area of your code. Any code that another user will interact with, functions being a perfect example, should annotate what types it expects and what type it returns. Your fellow developers will thank you and your tools will give you even better feedback. Functions can take multiple parameters. Here's an example. This function has two required parameters, a string for the message and an integer for the number of exclamation points to add at the end. Exclamation points are loud, no doubt about it, but sometimes you may not want to shout so loud. Of course, one option is to pass zero at the end as a second parameter, like this code shows. However, it is hard to read this line of code. A casual observer may not know what this magic zero is. Also, wouldn't it be better to simply leave off the second parameter if you don't want to use it? Luckily, Dart has a way to make this better. Wrap one or more parameters with square brackets to make them optional. Here's an example. Notice how the function now checks if exclamations is null, which is the value of the parameter if it was not provided by the caller. Now that the second parameter is optional, you can optionally omit it when you call the function. Here's an example. We made this function more flexible and easier to use. However, there is still another problem here. The second parameter, if it is provided, still looks a bit like a magic number. That is, the casual observer would not know what this magic number 5 means. Luckily, Dart has a solution for this too. You can make methods even easier to read by using optional named parameters. Here's an example. I think adding a simple name to the parameter makes it obvious what is going on. To define optional name parameters, wrap the parameters in curly braces. To briefly recap, there are two ways to define optional parameters. Square brackets for optional positional parameters and curly braces for optional name parameters. There's yet another benefit from the use of optional parameters. But first, the setup. Sometimes there's an obvious or default answer for a parameter. Only on occasion does it make sense to pass in something more unique. For example, here's a function that opens an HTTP connection. The first parameter IP address could be anything, so it's required. However, almost all HTTP connections use port 80, so the second parameter can be optional. The function is easier to use now because the user doesn't have to specify the obvious. However, the code inside the function is a bit verbose. Plus, there's no way to express to the user what the port's value is if it is not provided. Luckily, Dart lets us specify a default value for a parameter if that parameter is optional. Here's an example. This code is simpler, the semantics are more clear, and it is self-documenting. You can use any compile time constant, such as integer literals as shown here, for default values. Here are some examples of using this function. However, here is an example that might not be totally clear. Notice how I am passing null as the second parameter. Null is a perfectly valid value, so in this case, port will be set to null, even though it has a default value. The lesson here is that default values are only applied if the caller does not supply any value for the parameter. This means to really cover your bases, you should check for null, even when you use default values. This brings up a good question. In the case of an optional parameter without a default value, can you tell the difference between a user passing in null and not passing in anything at all? The parameter will be null either way. It turns out that Dart does indeed have a way to ask if an optional parameter was provided when the method was called. Just use the question mark parameter syntax. Here's an example. 
Like the optional name parameters, you can use default values with optional positional parameters. There is a syntax difference, though. You must use equals with the positional params instead of colon. Here's an example of defining an optional positional parameter with a default value. Moving on, you can define functions simply at the top level of your code. Here's an example. I love this because it means I don't need to wrap functions inside of classes. Writing a simple script with Dart is easy because of top level functions. Now you know that functions can capitalize on type annotations, have both optional positional and optional name parameters, have default values for their optional parameters, and more. There's a lot more to functions in Dart, and we'll cover nested functions, functions as objects, and more in a future episode. Thanks for watching. I'm Seth Ladd, and as we say here on Dart Tips, stay sharp. Click here to subscribe to our channel for more episodes of Dart Tips. We appreciate any thoughts you might have for the series. Please leave them in the comments below. And if you have any additional questions about Dart, please drop by Stack Overflow, where Dart experts are standing by to help you out. See you next time.